the studio with Kush, who is the filmmaker behind uh, a new documentary called Hierarchy. Um, the documentary will be premiered this Wednesday at the Legacy Centre, which was formerly known as The Drum. Um, so Kush, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the documentary? Well, um, the documentary is um, basically, um, it's about black boys and hair discrimination. I follow the journey of one family in particular and the battle that they're going through with their um, with her son's school. So um, a mother named Danika and a son Josiah. I'm very grateful for them letting me into their space and yeah. you know allow me to share their story because um it's it's there's been many ways that we're discriminated against, we've been discriminated against over the years and we're just tired of it now. You know, so the purpose behind this was um, number one, it was my final project. So I've just finished my master's in media production, TV and broadcasting. Yeah. So for our final project, we had to make what they call an artifact, <laughs> you know, an artifact, a visual artifact. So no matter what I would have done, it would have taken the same amount of effort to, you know, take the equipment out, do the filming, do the editing. So I wanted to do something that was going to have some purpose and some impact. And yeah. um, like around the time, I, I tend to do a lot of things around women and identity. So for my first degree, I did um, a piece um, called um, Blonde Hair, Blue Eyed Black Girl, where I yeah. looked at black teenage girls and how we develop a sense of our beauty and our understanding of ourselves over the years. So I didn't want to look at girls again. So I thought, oh, you know what? I was speaking to my cousin, you know, Kadeem, <laughs> and we were discussing like different ideas. I was like, I don't want to do girls again. So I was like, you know, I'm going to look at boys. Yeah. Because there seems to be a rise in, you know, boys being, getting problems with like, you know, the length of their hair, the type of plaques they're having. And now in this case, this grade two policy that has now emerged in some schools. So was that um, what inspired you to create this specific documentary? Was it hearing the stories um, of Josiah and kids like him? Or was it, or did that come after you decided to make the documentary? No, well, I think the fact that Josiah was so young, I mean, Josiah, five years old, and I thought to myself, at five years old, like, we already know that the system is down for our boys and, you know what I mean, trying to, you know, cut their character and, you know, trying to criminalise them and stuff. Yeah. We know all that's coming, but we normally expect those things to start happening in secondary school. Yeah. And it really touched me to know that at five, I mean, a five-year-old boy, <laughs> you know, is not supposed is to sad. be... And then I heard, because um, she's been on the TV already, Danica, they've been on the news already. Yeah. And I heard a comment, she said that um, her son said he didn't want to be black anymore. Now, when I hear things like that, my heart starts beating yeah. fast and <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. that's what particularly drew me. I said, you know what, I need to follow up on this story and just see if I can just get like a five minute yeah. talk with them. But um, again, very receptive, you know, um, Danica, the, I can imagine like the perseverance that she's had to have as well, battling this school, you know, and one of the ideas behind the documentary as well, you know, because as people started to realise that this is what I was doing, I was getting a lot of telephone numbers sent to me, then you start to realise, hold on, this is not a standalone case, this is happening, Everyone. and when people think that it's happening to them by themselves, it feels a lot more daunting, yeah. you know, we know there's strength in numbers, so one of the other um, purposes of this documentary is to kind of bring people together to show them that, or parents together, who may be experiencing it, that you're not going through it by yourself. There's an opportunity for you to guys to network yeah. and to, you know, be a unit instead of being like one individual face in the school. So was it quite easy for you to find people who were happy to share their experiences with you on camera for the documentary? Um, <laughs> When they found out, like, like the, I went to the barber shop, the actual barber that was um, cutting Josiah's hair, yeah. I went to interview him to get him to like explain some of the things. And while I was in there, there were parents that were happy to share the story, but they didn't want to be on camera. Yeah. Again, you know, nobody. I think there's still that fear of speaking out. You know, which a lot of not just black people, parents in general. Yeah. You know, tend to be a bit fearful about speaking out against a school where you have to then send your child to to be educated. I understand that. So um, a, lot, a lot of parents spoke to me but didn't want to be on camera. Some were less reluctant when I explained that it's not going to be on TV. 
you yeah. know, it's just, you know, for my uni project. But um, I, but most of them were happy to speak to me like just privately, just to kind of express their That's frustration and yeah. feelings. Yeah. How did you end up working with um, Dr. Kahindi Andrews? Well, me and um, Kahindi were, were personal friends. We also um, run an organisation together, Organisation of Black Unity. So I have a, um, a personal and a professional relationship with Kai, yeah. as I call him, Dr. Kindly Andrews. <laughs> but <laughs> I do have like a personal relationship with him. And um, like I said, he is um, he's big on sociology, especially around um, blackness. And yeah. you know, he's, he knows how to articulate himself well. So I wanted to use him just to kind of qualify some of the theories I'd already seen and were um, introducing into the documentary. Yeah. And so yeah, I thought he'd be a good participant for that as well. And he's a father of three boys, you know, two which are my godsons. Yeah. And he may, as a parent, have to face similar issues, you know. Yeah. So it was interesting to get his perspective as well. I've met um Kehindi once um, and he's a really intelligent guy. It was part of like a live radio show thing that New Style Radio did. Mm -hmm. um, it was Charmaine Burton. She oh, I know Charmaine. Yeah. Yeah, she'd organised um, an event, and it was like a live taping of her um, politics radio show. Um, and Kahindi was speaking on that, and he runs the first um, Black Studies yeah. degree course in the UK. If I'm remembering that yeah, correctly. That's right, yeah. So yeah, he's got, um, and he's also done talks um, at that church that I'm on Trinity Road, the one with the really woke pastor. Oh yeah, I was like, I did the event there last Saturday. Uh, it was a on a round table discussion. Yeah. Yeah, that was the 19th of October. It was How really that good. Go? It I was saw that. really, I really, really good. It, it was really good. Like. Reverend Eve, like I love her. She is, she's the dynamic she's the for a only pastor. Person from the church who I can listen to what they're saying, and I feel like she has so much to say she that does. is of value, and isn't just you know the usual wishy-washy church stuff. Like she's the real deal. She's, she's on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she is. is. She's really good. Um, so, what are you hoping to achieve with the film? Because in the um, promo that you've done for it, I think it says something about inviting people to be part of the movement. Yes, well, I mean, the, 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 the idea behind the documentary, like I said, number one was to draw attention to not just um, Denise and Desai's story, but to just highlight that this is, a, you know, this is something that's happening quite a lot all over the place. Yeah. Number two is to bring people together. So what I'm assuming is that the people that are going to be part of the audience are going to be either people that number one have experienced it or have something they would like to say on it or people that can you yeah. know help with it i'll be having a representative from awake birmingham there yeah. and awake deal with like um school policies and school yeah. exclusions they're, really they have, they're very good so i'll have a representative from there as well that can advise them differently and again it's about bringing people together you know and um, providing a safe space bringing people together and then you know for them to network amongst yeah. themselves and say, okay, then um, this is what we're going to do. We can either form this committee or form this or, yeah. you know, whatever the, the case may be. But it's an opportunity to come and be around like-minded people having similar experiences and then it's up to them then, you know, like what they'd like to do with the information. And you have a panel discussion after the show. Yeah, I'm going to have a discussion um, with the participants of the, um, of the documentary and, um, yeah, just just welcome members of the audience to comment or give any suggestions that they may have on yeah. you know, what they've viewed. What do you think needs to change then in terms of school policies? How do we um, open up the discussion with the people who can actually make the change, so the policy makers, the school boards and governors and councils? It's, it's not that we can't have the discussion, you know, but this is not a new thing, you know what I mean? This is not a new phenomenon. It's not the first element of discrimination that we face as black people within the schools. So it's it's a basically acknowledging the fact that there really there's no incentive for these schools to change. What's the incentive for these schools to change their policies? They're getting worse, especially these academies. You know, yeah. you understand how academies work, they're run very much like businesses. So whereas with local authority schools, local authority can step in and you know, have more of an impact in how schools, yeah. you know, um, you know, deal with their um, policies and stuff. These um, these academies, they're like private-run businesses, 
and what's the, what's the incentive? They can't say to you, we do not want black in a city or urban, whatever the term is, in our school, but they can make it very uncomfortable for your child to be yeah. there. And yeah. that's what it is. And for everyone that leaves, there's, you know, there's other children to come in. So I think, you know, I'm always big on self-reliance. I'm always big on, you know, a black education for black children, yeah. black socialization. Children need to be around children that look like them. They need to learn with children that look like them. You know what I mean? So um, places like Children of the Sun Saturday School, that's down at Broadway School on Saturdays, that some things like that I, um, you know, I support and suggest for, um, for children, for parents to send their children to, if they want their children to you know, be socialized and to gain a bit more confidence, to, you know, to kind of um, counteract some of the damage yeah. that these schools may be having psychologically. So we need to be educating our own children. We need to work like dub doubly hard, you know, when it comes to issues around identity. You know, Definitely. we need to make sure our children see representations of themselves from a young age. So do you want to let people know where they can get tickets to the event and what they can expect? When okay, they get so you can get tickets on shubs.com. They're also on Eventbrite, but I haven't really been pushing the Eventbrite. Um, I've been pushing Shubs because Shubs is black owned. So please go to shubs.com to get your tickets. Um, the show starts, the show, the um, screening is at 7.30 and then there'll be a panel discussion from 8.15. And the tickets are five pounds for adults and three pounds for children. And please be on time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's done at the Legacy. Next week, Wednesday, the 30th of October. Um, yeah, seven thirty screening. Try and come about seven o'clock so you can get get a good yeah, seat before see. the all before the all full. Yeah. That's, that's the vision that I've got. You see, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been into the new Legacy Center yet, so I'm looking forward to coming and yeah, come checking down, it out. Yeah. Yeah. there's been some wonderful events down there since the um, the opening. Cause I do a bit of work down there. You know, your friendly bar lady. So there's been some wonderful events. We have to keep supporting the Legacy. Yeah. You know, it's our um, it's our um, centre, it's our building, it's owned by our people, you yeah. know, need I stress that anymore, <laughs> so yeah, get down to the legacy, and also my book basket is right next door as well, they've moved from One Stop Perry Bar, so check out my book basket as well. I saw, um, I think it might have been on your post actually about Shubs, and I didn't even know that there was, I didn't know it existed until I saw that. Ah, you see. I that's that's, that's, that's that. the purpose. So um, yeah, like I said, the tickets are on Eventbrite as well. For um, try and buy them through Shubs. Yeah, buy them through Shubs. dot com. <laughs> shubs. 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 dot com. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with us today, Kush. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, I'll come back anytime. And I'm looking forward to checking out the documentary. Yeah, I'll well. see you on Wednesday. I will see you there.